Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're interested in vocal technique, pick up my ebook called Becoming a Natural Singer. Or if you want one-on-one -on -one help, book a lesson through my website or drop me an email, links in the description. So the big issue, what is it? Manipulation, spoke about it recently on the Jacob Collier video. This idea of not having a flat onset. But this is a deeper topic that really goes beyond any particular singer. I was watching Twitch live the other day, watching a few musicians, and I found a couple of really good singers, found a few who I was like, hmm. And what is the issue? A lot of the time with singers that we that are actively polarizing, singers that are more disliked or loved, this sense of marmite in a singer, a lot of the time, the onset is altered. And what I mean by that is they are having to manipulate to get to their default sound or the sound that they're using to sing on. But this goes beyond that even. There is a plague even within the coaching community of how do I sound like X, Y or Z? And the issue is this. We'll get a coach who'll say, let's let's use Lewis Capaldi as an example, because he's a particularly good example. You know, how do I sing like Lewis Capaldi? Students will ask. And we'll be like, well, you know, he's kind of like this, you know, I'm going under, and this time I feel there's no one to save me. So you've got to have a really low larynx and you've got to sing on narrow vowels. Yes, but no. The thing is, is for most people to get to that sound, they have to alter the mechanism from its default position more than Lewis does. Now, sure, Lewis does darken up a little bit. He sings a little bit in this direction. But he doesn't have to manipulate much to get to his sound. If I do what he does, I'm going under and this term I feel there's no one to see. E -E. I got to really get low on the larynx. I got to really anchor that larynx down. My point being is depending on the sound, you're going to be closer to it from the flat onset or further away from it, depending on the sound you're going for and the voice type you have. For example, if you're a woman trying to sound like Lewis Capaldi, you're probably not going to be able to even manipulate enough to get to that sound in the first place. But if you're a guy, you probably can shape things enough to kind of get there. Now that's all well and good. I sound like Lewis Capaldi. But the thing is you don't. Because a good voice is a marriage of a flat onset and shaping. It is not going into character. Now, for musical theatre, for certain styles of music, you may need to go into character. You may need to manipulate in certain directions more so than you would if you're singing pop or contemporary music. But the key thing to understand is that the more we manipulate, the further we get away from ourselves and the closer we get to being in character. And when people listen to modern music and they hear a singer who's in character, they talk to you like this in between songs and then they go to sing and they're like, e I don't want it, ah, 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 or whatever it is. Immediately, people are like, <sighs> you know, he kind of sings well, but it just, it something doesn't fit. And that's the feeling they get. The thing is that singer is not really being true to themselves. They're more in character. They're more distancing themselves from who they are as a singer, naturally. And they are trying to be something they're not. People pick up on that. They may not be able to necessarily explain it in the way I just have, but the, the audience will know that, that something's not matching, that something's just, it's not clear enough. It's not clean enough. And this is unfortunate. Now, this particular singer I was watching is a young girl who's a good singer, a good musician, but she had a lot of this manipulation, a lot of darkening in the sound that just dragged dragged you away from who she was in between songs. And it just, it felt, it felt contrived. It felt off. 
And outside of that, though, she was a very good singer, in fact. She had a lot of good technique. She had good songs. She was doing some covers as well. It was all nice. This is a great example of a small problem that can, can mask a great musician or a great artist. If you have this contrived nature to your sound, if you have this manipulation that drags you off of center too much, too far, no matter how good the other stuff gets, you're always going to be a bit polarizing as a singer. Now, just to round this up, we see this in other styles as well. In classical, I used to work at the Royal Albert Hall and I used to notice we used to have this show called Classical Spectacular. And I would contrast that to the proms, some of the great classical singers you'd get at the proms, and you'd see the same conflict. You'd see the classical spectacular singers, not all of them, some of them are very, very good, but you'd see the odd one who would be super dark and muddy. It's like so muddy and dark and covered. It would just be like, just it would just sound too much, too far. And then you get a singer like Juan Diego Flores, a nice light tenor who has got that classical angle on his voice, but like Pavarotti, just takes it far enough that there's darkening and rounding, but it doesn't lose the overall brightness in the sound. So this is an example of we can manipulate a little bit, we can lean a little bit, but if it's taken too far, we're in character, we're contrived, we're going to lose the audience. Nobody is going to care. Anyway, that's my video on this concept of manipulation. It's a misunderstood topic and it's something I needed to fill out and kind of put across to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe, thumbs up. I'll catch you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.